not quite accurate. I'll just say we're honored to have you. You seem like a wonderful person. Thank you for coming and introduce yourself here. To thank you. Thank you. It's a real honor to be here and uh, with all these incredible minds. And thank you very much, Leslie, for giving me this opportunity. Well, I'm delighted. Thank you for coming. So, um, draw from a lot of the same sources that Mel and Greg do. And I'm uh, going to read a few words first, and then we're going to do some fun stuff. Because, uh, well, it'll be more of a demonstration and dialogue and less of a paper. But uh, uh, to begin with, let me just say that uh, uh, a big inspiration for my work is um, Martin Buber. And in his seminal work, Martin Buber lets us know early on that he considered the world of experience, the it world as he called it, to be an entirely different mode of being than that of relation, where I meet you as a partner. He wrote, those who experience do not participate in the world, for the experience is in them and not between them and the world. The world does not participate in experience, it allows itself to be experienced, but it is not concerned, for it contributes nothing, and nothing happens to it. The, big, the, word, the world as experience belongs to the basic word I it. The basic word I you establishes the world of relation. He goes on to say, when I confront a human being as my you and speak the basic word I you to him, then he is no thing among things, nor does he consist of things. He is no longer he or she, limited by other he's and she's, adopted in the world grid of space and time, nor a condition that can be experienced and described, a loose bundle of name qualities. Neighborless and seamless, he is you and fills the firmament. Not as if there were nothing but he, but everything else lives in his light. Even as a melody is not composed of tones, nor a verse of words, nor a statue of lines, one must pull and tear to turn a unity into a multiplicity. So it is with a human being to whom I say you. When I first read these words as a teenager, they made my head swim. I was intoxicated. I had an, only a glimmer of what they meant, but I knew he was onto something. I now compare these two modes of being, I, it and I, you, the experiential and the relational, to two different operating systems on a computer, like the ones that drive a Mac and a PC. I can't run my PC programs on my Mac and vice versa. It's, just, it's not like they just use different symbols for the same, uh, for the same things. They process information, process information differently. In the experiential I, it mode, we objectify things. That is, we turn objects, we turn them into objects in our minds. We abstract them. And in the relational I, you mode, there are no objects. There is only now. In my object-based experiential consciousness, I do not participate. I encounter the surfaces of things only. I concoct a story that makes sense of what is happening. In my non-objective awareness, there is no story. I and you resonate together, neighborless and seamless, as Buber says. So to fully participate in the world, I need both. I've been studying Chinese internal martial arts, mostly Tai Chi Chuan, but also Bagua, Xing Yi, Yi Chuan, Lo Xinjiang, uh, a lot of uh, esoteric uh, Chinese internal martial arts. And that means what an internal martial art is, that you're using your internal energy but also using you know, transforming your state of being as a way of empowering yourself and others. So rather than just building up a stronger structure, a bigger form, whatever, you're actually transforming yourself and modulating your state of being to produce effects. Uh, and I've been practicing energy medicine in various forms for longer than that. They are two sides of the same mountain. Both slow things way down so that you notice things that are not apparent at ordinary speeds. Both create demonstrable effects by addressing subtle energies and states of consciousness. And at their finest, they bring about a heightened state of body-mind-spirit integration. 
To be effective in either internal martial arts or energy healing, you have to be pragmatic. You have to go with what works. And a lot of that is ineffable. Only a small part of what works in either of those arenas can be written large enough to share with a group like this. I put together a demonstration that I hope you'll find entertaining, and uh, after that we can kind of break it down. Okay? So, uh, I got to ask Nick to help me with the uh, demonstration. So, uh, uh, we haven't done this before, so the, anything could happen here, but if you want to come up here. So, the, uh, Nick, besides being a, an artist and a scholar, and a mystic, he is also a power lifter. And um, so the demonstration is going to show the difference between objectification and medium. And there will be demonstrable physical effects that uh, can, be, can be seen from, uh, from these two different modes of being. So if uh, you just stand there, just, you know, just like that, and I push straight back and you resist, right? So we have a fairly weak st structure here. So even though Nick is strong, it doesn't take much to knock him, push him backwards, okay? If I go here, it's going to be even stronger here, okay? Yeah, and, and just push back, and he's going to turn rather than go backward because it doesn't, this is not a structure which will support. No matter how strong Nick is, that's going to be a problem. If you push me, okay, and do the same thing, if I resist in a muscular way, if I objectify Nick and say, oh my God, this is big, strong guy, less than half my age, and can probably lift me up over his head a few times, <laughs> pushing on me, he does it again here, boom, pushing like that, I'm going to go backward. Because that's the... You know, I am seeing him as an object. If, however, doing the same thing here, you're pushing in, and I meet him non-objectively, a different effect occurs. I'm gonna do it again here, so, oh. And we can do this all day. In fact, I can stand on one leg and do the same thing, right? In fact, I can lift Nick up while standing on one leg. Something has changed, even though my physicality hasn't changed. What has changed has been my state of being and our relational mode. I am meeting Nick not as an object or a threat, something to be feared, but as my partner in this. He's my buddy. And we're doing this together. And just by that shift, my energy shifts, our relationship shifts, and my, the potentiality of my 